Ira Rimson was a well-known chemist in the latter half of the 1800s. He's actually the person that discovered the first artificial sweetener, saccharin. He tells a story when he was working at a doctor's office as a young man, this was probably back in the 1860s or so, and he read a statement in a chemistry book that said nitric acid acts upon copper. And he was curious to know what that meant. He didn't find that a very illuminating statement. So having a copper penny in his pocket, he took it out, poured some nitric acid on it, and observed what happened. And it was pretty impressive. It was foaming and bubbling, and noxious brown smoke was coming off. He got very nervous about what to do with the penny, so he grabbed the penny with his fingers and threw it out the window. And he made another discovery, and that was that nitric acid acts upon fingers. It's a very corrosive material, which is why I'm going to be wearing a glove here in a few minutes when I work with it. Once he threw the penny out the window and it began to burn his fingers, logical thing to do, he wiped his hand on his pants and made another discovery, and that was nitric acid acts upon pants. It was a rather expensive lesson, but very illuminating. He remembered that the rest of his life. And so we have a demonstration that did chemists like to do, which is called the Ira Rimson demonstration. We're going to do it in a little more controlled fashion here by reacting our pennies with nitric acid inside this flask. So over in, in this larger flask here, we have water with a little bit of phenolphthalein indicator in it. We're going to put the pennies in here, add their nitric acid, and I want you guys to watch and see what happens. All right, the first thing we'll want to do is to put two pennies into our round flask. These are old pennies before 1983, when pennies were still made of copper. You have to make sure you use a penny before 1983. Let's go ahead and add our nitric acid, and then we're going to very quickly seal up this flask because it's going to start producing a rather noxious gas, nitrogen dioxide. So let's observe what happens. You can see that the nitrogen dioxide is beginning to bubble over into our flask. Now the flask, the large flask is pink right now because it's basic. But nitrogen dioxide, when it dissolves in water, forms nitric acid once again, and it's going to slowly turn that solution acidic. And if you remember, what does phenolphthalein do in an acidic solution? Well, you're going to see in a moment here. And, of course, it becomes clear. So the nitrogen dioxide forming in the round flask is bubbling over dissolving in the water in the larger flask and it's reforming a nitric acid solution. Now eventually, of course, our two pennies will be completely gone. So we'll watch this for a few minutes here. You can see now that the bubbling has slowed down significantly and the pennies just about reacted. There's a little piece of it still floating around on the surface of the nitric acid. It looks like the bubbling is just about done and the reaction has finished. It looks like the reaction has finished. The nitrogen dioxide now in the right hand flask is beginning to cool, and as it does, it's contracting and the pressure is dropping. You can see the water rising up the glass tube in the left hand flask due to that decrease in pressure. Pretty quickly, the water is going to reach the top and it's going to begin to flow into our right hand flask, and when it does, things are going to get pretty interesting. Now as soon as the water starts flowing into the flask over on the right, the nitrogen dioxide starts dissolving. That creates a vacuum in the flask and the water gets pulled in ever faster. You'll notice that it was sort of a nice green color to start with, which happens when copper nitrate is very concentrated. But as it gets diluted, 
it becomes this lovely blue color. Let's go ahead and take a, another look at this, but we'll zoom in on that flask. That'll give you a, a bit of a better view here. You can see how quickly the water is rushing in there when the nitrogen dioxide dissolves and forms a vacuum. It's a pretty exciting demonstration. Lots of pretty colors, lots of interesting chemical reactions. I think Ira Remsen would be proud to have this demonstration named after him.